Steven Crowder is probably one of, if not the most homophobic people on the right, and while most of his peers on the right has found more toned down and like covert ways of expressing their homophobia, he doesn't resort to dog whistles. Like he just straight up says the quiet part out loud. And I've got to say, Steven Crowder is a little bit sus for someone who is supposedly straight to be that concerned and seemingly obsessed with gay people. I have to assume he's going through a little bit of a struggle internally himself. And everything that he says is like, it's his internalized homophobia getting vocalized in a way that he thinks is going to make him seem more straight when in actuality the things that he says here to me make him seem really gay and it makes him seem like a closeted homosexual uh but regardless of his motivations what he's doing and what he's saying is deeply deeply troubling and he's going to use a stereotype about gay men that has been used to justify discrimination against them for decades and he's going to say this all with a straight face while wearing a cape so at this point this is basically just like brazen hate speech nonetheless take it away steven you i think women generally and, and i mean this don't fully understand the danger at play particularly from um gay men they are definitely more predatory in nature as far as recruiting than women because men are more sexually predatory in nature yeah mm -hmm. i think a lot of women just think oh you know oh he, he's just catty and i always have you know women always love having gay friends and I mean, I've known that for a long time, and I understand it's, it's, it, you're comfortable because it's like being with a woman, but they don't often understand the, the world when well, we're talking about sexuality that men live in. And so you don't see it nearly as hypersexualized, for example, with lesbian women to the same degree that yeah. you do with gay men. No. Look, here's the issue with, with the homosexual community with men that I need women to understand because often like, well, what's the harm in going to drag queen story hour? Okay. Any woman who has been in a sexual relationship with a man, okay? Think of all the times that the man wanted to have sex, which was pretty much always, and you said, not right now. Now remove the not right now. That's every gay couple. That's why almost none are monogamous. Statistically, it's true. A very, very small percentage of gay couples are monogamous. Why? Because men can have unfettered sex with no emotional connection. And guess what? It feels good. And this is why you have a hypersexualized community. This is why AIDS was exclusive to the gay community in the United States, despite how Fauci lied about it initially. Your chance of getting AIDS right now in this country as a heterosexual, monogamous, non-drug-using male is 0%. And it's still statistically zero, even if you haven't been entirely monogamous. Let's just be clear about that. And I want this is a message to mothers out there, because I think fathers always inherently at least understand what they they're, they're overly protective of young girls generally speaking and then they are generally speaking more aware of how they need to be protective with young boys it's why often women don't understand how young boys are bullied yeah because it's very different from how young women are bullied and so you need to understand the risk particularly with young boys in your household um as it comes from this, this community, and what do I mean by this community? I mean men who have kids climb on them, show them their crotchless nylons, and do drag queen story hour. It's not just fun and a little bit peppy or spicy. It's a problem, and you need to be aware of how they're marketing to your kids. Notice how he kind of told on himself there a little bit. Men can have unfettered sex with no emotional connection, and guess what? It feels good. Interesting. It sounds like you're speaking from experience, Stephen. It feels good. Now, um... There's a lot of tells in there. Like, there's a lot of red flags that lead me to believe that this individual is a six on the Kinsey scale. Like, he is as gay as you can possibly be, but he's fighting so hard to, like, hide it. So he says uh, they are definitely more predatory in nature as far as recruiting. Now, whenever I hear somebody talk about recruiting in the context of LGBTQ plus issues, I think either one, they're stupid, or two, they're gay themselves because you can't be recruited to be gay. It's not contagious. Like getting exposed to a gay person or coming in contact with a gay person, knowing that they exist in and of itself, isn't going to entice you into making a choice. To believe that you can be enticed or recruited suggests that you're kind of projecting. You didn't make that choice, but you think others also want to make that choice because you're attracted to men, Stephen, but you chose to uh, suppress it and uh, live as a heterosexual marry a woman look regardless of what you choose to do being gay is not a choice it's something that's innate and suppressing it or not suppressing it you're still gay so steven crowder here to think that people can be recruited 
That's like one of the biggest tells of all. Steven, do you think that people can be recruited to be gay because uh, they're going to see it as enticing? Is that like what you believe? It feels good. Uh, another tell. He says that lesbians aren't hypersexualized. I mean, say, <laughs> saying that, my head nearly exploded. Have you seen a single music video in the last 10, 15 years? Have you seen the trending tab on any pornographic website? I mean, as a straight man, uh, lesbian porn is probably one of the more popular categories for straight men. They're sexualized for purposes of appeasing heterosexual men. And so I feel like as a straight man, he would kind of know this, right? But he's not really thinking that much about the sexualization of lesbians because he's not attracted to women. And again, I'm just psychoanalyzing him here and I'm not a psychologist, but like everything that he says, the way he acts is precisely the way that I acted as a teenager. Like I thought that if I were as homophobic as I could possibly be, people would think that I was less gay when in actuality, like being super homophobic is a telltale sign that you yourself are suppressing those feelings and you're struggling a little bit. Now, um, he says that uh, a very small percentage of gay couples are monogamous. He also throws out another statistic. Your chance of getting AIDS as a straight man is statistically 0%. So he doesn't even have to cite these statistics to make his point. But the statistics that he's citing, he pulled out of thin air because... They're not true. First of all, to say that a very small percentage of gay couples are monogamous, that's just wrong. And second of all, you shouldn't care because what consenting adults do on their own time, it doesn't concern you, Stephen. Uh, but that's also not true. 30% of gay men are in open relationships, which means that 70% are in monogamous relationships. Now, 30% of gay men being in open relationships is actually higher than I expected. But nonetheless, like he claimed the opposite. He said that it's a very small percentage who are monogamous. Um, on top of that, when it comes to, um, you know, the AIDS rate, it is the case that LGBTQ plus people suffer from HIV and AIDS at a higher rate than their straight peers. But he said that it's like statistically 0% chance that you're going to get AIDS if you're a straight man, when it's actually 7% of heterosexual men that made up all of the new HIV diagnoses diagnosis and heterosexual people overall make up 23% of the diagnosis. Why he chose to lie about this, um, you know, he thinks that it's helping to prove his point, like the uh, gay aversion to monogamy in some instances he thinks is going to prove that they're like more promiscuous than the average individual, but he just like confidently says something so incredibly wrong, uses statistics that I'm guessing he pulled out of his ass. Um, on top of that, he goes on to say, you need to understand the risk, particularly with young boys in your household as it comes to this community. So when he says this community, understand that he's broadening out that term. He's not just talking about gay men anymore. He's saying that all members of the community are preying on young boys. Now, he doesn't use an example of the risk that they pose. He cites drag queen story hour. I don't think that's a risk. Dressing up in a costume, that's not a risk to children. You're literally wearing a costume as you film this segment. But what are you talking about, Stephen? He didn't say the word pedophilia or molestation, but he's priming you to think gay men are pedophiles. And so since he seemed so obsessed with facts and statistics, we should actually look at the data here when it comes to this issue. So the Southern Poverty Law Center explains, according to the American Psychological Association, children are not more likely to be molested by LGBT parents or their LGBT friends or acquaintances. Gregory Herrick, a professor at the University of California, Davis, who is one of the nation's leading researchers on prejudice against sexual minorities, reviewed a series of studies and found no evidence that gay men molest children at higher rates than heterosexual men. The Child Molestation Research and Prevention Institute notes that 90% of child molesters target children in their network of family and friends, and the majority are men married to women. Most child molesters, therefore, are not gay people lingering outside schools waiting to snatch children from the playground, as much religious right rhetoric suggests. So using these statistics and his logic, the logic that he applies to gay people, is uh, uh, we should really understand the risk that heterosexual men like Steven Crowder pose to children in actuality. I'm just looking at the data, right? Maybe he's trying to lure children and he's wearing a cape after all. Are you trying to appeal to children? 
Are you trying to prey on them? Get them to, you know, friend, be friendly with you because you're wearing a cape? I mean, of course, when I'm saying this, I'm being purposefully hyperbolic, but this is the logic that he's using to demonize gay men. And regardless if he is gay himself or not, what he's doing here is deeply, deeply harmful because his audience, they trust what he has to say. And so they're going to think, oh, wow, gay men are, uh, are predators, LGBTQ plus people in general. They are a risk to young boys when that is absolutely factually incorrect and morally reprehensible. So this is a uh, hate speech. There's no if, ands, or buts about it. And regardless if Steven Crowder is in the closet or not, the damage that he's doing to gay people here is truly, truly irreparable. Because these stereotypes, even if gay people are accepted much more culturally now and socially, these stereotypes still linger till this day. They still are used to make people feel homophobic. And for him to invoke this stereotype to demonize gay people, it's truly just gross. And this is like one of the biggest pieces of shit on the internet. Recovery mode, my brain ideas. Recovery mode, my brain ideas. 